the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y... Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, we never expected to find Summerfield's water commissioner, the great Gildersleeve, in ladies' hats. But that's where we find him today, in the ladies' hat business. Yes, he and Adeline Fairchild are about to open a fashionable millinery shop in her house right next door. It's the morning of the grand opening, and the Gildersleeve family is at home, busily preparing for the great event. Marjorie! Yes, Uncle. You take those decorations over to Adeline? Yes, Uncle. and her living room looks awfully cute, just like a hat store. Well, that's nice. Well, we've got a lot of things to do if we're going to open by 3 o'clock. Let's see. Marjorie, you can call the florist. All right. Can't have a big opening without flowers. And tell them to send plenty of roses. If we have any left over, we can sew them on a hat. Did you call the musicians about wearing their tuxedos? Yes, but the cello player doesn't have one. Oh, well, he can hide behind his cello. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mort, don't you think it's a little silly to have a string trio? Silly? No, I don't. Your old uncle knows what he's doing. Adeline's hat salon is going to be a fashionable hat shop. So we've got to have a fashionable opening. Just like those stylish stores in New York. Oh, Sure. Aren't you going down to the water department today? No, taking the day off. In fact, I may not be at the water department much longer. What? Well, this hat business might grow into a pretty big thing. Before long, we might have a whole chain of hat stores. I might even change my name. Chapels by Pierre Gillesleeve. <laughs> oh, Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go make those phone calls. Paris in the spring. tra la tra la <sighs> Oh, hello, Leroy. Did you get all your little jobs done over there, my boy? Yeah. Carried in all those hat boxes, helped Miss Fairchild move the tables around, and burnt the trash. Oh, well, that's good. Now you can sweep the front walk. Oh, Uncle, I'm tired. Gee, it's your hat store. Why aren't you doing some of the work? No, my boy, that's not the right attitude. Don't forget I'm doing the brain work, and that's the hardest job of all. Ah. Leroy? <laughs> That's the spirit. And when you finish that, I'm going to give you a dollar. A whole dollar? Yeah. Will that make you feel better? Sure. I'm not tired now. Yeah, I thought so. Well, my boy, this opening could lead to big things. You may not know it, but you're gazing at the future hat king of America. Huh? Mm-hmm. Chapeaux by Pierre Gillesleeve. Oui, oui, madame. Oui, oui, mademoiselle. Ooh, la, la. Boy, what a character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better see how Mademoiselle Bertie's getting along with the refreshments. <clears throat> Paris in the spring, tra la, tra la. Oh, hello, Miss Gillespie. Bonjour, Bertie. Huh? <laughs> How's everything coming out here? Just fine. Got the sandwiches all made, little bitty ones like you told me. That's right, Bertie, canopies. That's what they always serve at fashionable openings. Sure sounds like it's going to be a fancy affair. Well, that's the way you have to do these things, Bertie. I figured it all out. By having a ritzy opening, I got a big social leader like Mrs. Pettibone to come. Miss Pettibone? I thought you and her didn't get along so good. Well, she is a little on the stuck-up side, but business is business, Bertie. She's president of the women's club. Carries a lot of weight in this town. First, sir. If we get her for a customer, the women will be flocking into our hat shop. We'll be selling hats like hotcakes. And some of them look like hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, we're smart to figure that all out, Mr. Gilsley. Well, you have to use your head in the hat business. <laughs> yeah. uh, glad you liked it. Well, just to better get over and see if Miss Fairchild needs any advice. 
Yeah, she's a lucky girl to have Pierre Gildersleeve for a partner. Paris in the spring. Tra-la, tra-la. <laughs> what a fan. Uh, good morning, partner. Well, looks like we're ready for business. Does it really look all right? Wonderful, Adeline. And those hats you've made are really beautiful. Yes, sir, you've certainly got the artistic touch. Well, it sort of runs in the family, I guess. My Aunt Clementine was a famous artist in Savannah. She was? Yes, she used to paint rosebuds on teacups. <laughs> That's so. Well, Adeline, with your talent and my business ability, we'll make a fortune in this place between now and Easter. I suppose so. I am a little nervous, though. I didn't know my little hat shop was going to have such a fancy opening. You just leave everything to old Uncle Throckmorton. A big opening like this will start us off with a bang. Why, Mrs. Pettibone alone will bring in half the women in this town. Uh, Throckmorton? Yes? Yeah. Mrs. Pettibone isn't coming to the opening. What? Why not? We had a spat at the women's club last night. Oh, my goodness. Well, she started it. I didn't. But, Adeline, what happened? Well, I overheard her make a remark about my dress. You know, my old-fashioned organdy with the bows. What did she say? She said it looked like something left over from Gone with the Wind. <laughs> but, Adeline, this is no time to quarrel with Mrs. Pettibone. Throckmorton, that's an insult to the entire South. So I told her in her Yankee clothes she looked like General Grant's grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks she's so stylish. I can outdress her any day. But, Adeline, this will ruin the opening if she doesn't come. I don't care. But you're upsetting all my plans. We'll lose a lot of customers. If we have to depend on that Yankee for customers, I'd just as soon close up. Close up? We haven't even opened yet. <laughs> Adeline, you can't do this. Remember, I've got $200 in this hat shop. And we need Mrs. Pettibone. <laughs> don't want to hear any more about it. If she doesn't want to come, she doesn't have to. What? I haven't got time to stand around here talking about it. I've got some work to do out back. See you later, partner. Hmm. <laughs> what a partner. I wonder if Sears had this much trouble with Roebuck. <laughs> Just got to patch things up with Mrs. Pettibone some way. Let's see. I wonder if I took her over one of these hats. Here's a little peace offering. It might work. I'll pick out a nice one. Here, here's one. Got an ostrich feather on it. Just the thing for Mrs. Pettibone. She's got a neck like an ostrich. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll try it. I got nothing to lose. Onward, Pierre Gildersleeve. <laughs> up just like hers. Get away, dog. Get away from that hat box. Let go of that. Let go of that, you little punch. Excuse me. What? Oh, oh. Hello, Mrs. Pettibone. What are you doing to my dog? Oh, nothing. He won't let go of my hat box. Well, you must have frightened him. Come here, Rollo. Rollo. <laughs> The big fat man scare you. Oop. Well, here's your hat box, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good day. Uh, oh, Mrs. Pettibone. Yes? Uh, guess what's in the hat box. What? A lady's hat. Really? Are you selling hats door to door now? Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> no, no. It's a gift for you. A gift? <laughs> yes. I thought, and that is Miss Fairchild, thought you might like to have it. Miss Fairchild? No, thank you. But after the remarks she made at the club last night. Oh, well, Adeline's sorry about that. I look like General Grant's grandmother. You do? I mean, no, oh, you don't. <laughs> Adeline was only kidding. In fact, she insisted that I bring over this little peace offering. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're not just saying that, so I'll attend your opening this afternoon, are you? No. But I want you to just look at this hat. 
Here, I'll open the box. There. Isn't that a beauty? Well, it is rather nice. Oh, and it has an ostrich feather. Yeah. Came from a real ostrich. <laughs> Looks like it was just made for you. <laughs> Why don't you try the hat on, Mrs. Pettibone? Well, all right. Why, Mrs. Pettibone, it looks beautiful on you. It does? Well, I just look at myself in the window here. Well, it does look rather chic, doesn't it? Chic? Oh, yes. Mrs. Pettibone, it's a mighty good thing you're not coming to the opening this afternoon. What? Why, you look so beautiful in that hat, our customers would spend all their time admiring you. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, on second thought, I will attend your opening. Well, if you insist. Uh, see you at three o'clock. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Goodbye, Mrs. Pettibone. Yeah, I made it. <laughs> Take your time. Well, Gildersleeve, you did it again. I certainly have a way with women. <laughs> Look at all these hats. Money, 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 money. <sighs> women sure put some strange things on their heads. Well, if they're silly enough to buy them, we're silly enough to sell them. <laughs> Look at this one. Looks like a soup strainer with a veil on it. <laughs> well, I think I'll try this on just for fun. Yeah. Yeah, take a look in the mirror here. <laughs> Very chic. <laughs> well, I look as good as Mrs. Pettibone, anyway. <laughs> Anybody here? Oops, the judge. Well, pardon me, madam. Haven't I seen you someplace before? <laughs> All right, Hooker. You look very fetching in that hat, Gilda. Would you care to go to the movies with me tonight? All right, you skinny old goat. Stick around. We can use you for a hat rack. Very amusing. Well, I see you're all ready for the grand opening. Yes, yes. I understand it's going to be quite a social event. Newspaper photographers, a string trio, everything very ultra, ultra. Naturally. When I do something, I do it right. Oh, too bad Mrs. Pettibone isn't coming. What? I hear she and Miss Fairchild had a little spat at the women's club last night. Is that so? Well, that's ancient history, Methuselah. I just went over to Mrs. Pettibone's, gave her a hat with an ostrich feather on it, and the whole thing is patched up. Oh, it is? You bet. Nothing to it. I just happen to have a way with women, Judge. Throckmorton. Oh, hello, Judge. How do you do, Miss Fairchild? Throckmorton, I don't know where I put that hat. I've been looking all over for it. Hmm? What hat? The one with the ostrich feather. The one with an ostrich feather? Yes. I made that one especially for myself to wear to the opening this afternoon. <laughs> well, you did? When my picture's in the paper tomorrow in that stylish hat, Mrs. Pettibone will just turn green. You, oh? <laughs> Have you seen a truck, Morton? Huh? Gildy, isn't that the hat you gave to Mrs. Pettibone? <laughs> what? You gave my hat to Mrs. Pettibone? Well, it was just a little gift, that line. <laughs> That's how I got her to come to the opening. She's coming here? Well, yes. You see... Uh... I'm warning you, Throckmorton. If that Yankee woman comes here wearing my hat, my Savannah temper's gonna boil right over. Uh, but, Adeline, <laughs> you wouldn't make a scene, would you? Oh, wouldn't I? I'm liable to rip that hat right off of her head. <laughs> God, Adeline, you'll ruin the opening. I don't care. There's gonna be another civil war, and this time the South's gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gildy, you certainly have a way with women. <laughs> Why did I ever want to get in the hat business? Bertie, do you know what taste buds are? Taste buds? I never heard of them. Well, it's like this. When you take one of your crisp homemade rolls from the oven and spread some parquet on it to try out the flavor... I sure love testing them rolls with parquet. Sometimes I test two or three at one sitting. Mm -mm. Well, it's your taste buds that tell you the flavor is okay. Okay, bud. I mean, okay, Mr. Wall. 
I mean, well, I don't know what you call them, but... Taste buds, Bertie. Well, they ought to call them taste like it should cost twice as much buds, because that's the way parquet tastes to me. Uh, it's a luxury flavor, all right, Bertie. Light, delicate, and delicious. And the reason is parquet is prepared like a rare luxury food from the selected products of American farms. Yet with all its flavor and with all the nourishment and the 15,000 units of essential vitamin A you get in every pound of parquet, with all that, parquet costs only about half as much as the most expensive spread. Friends, if you want to have a real treat, serve parquet tomorrow. Sure, you just sit down at the table and say, Okay, bud, here comes that parquet! <laughs> That's T-A-R-K-A-Y, the margarine made by Kraft, that tastes like it should cost twice as much. Well, the great Gildersleeve is learning that every hat does not have a silver lining. In fact, the hat with the ostrich feather on top is giving him a headache. Right now, he's nervously ringing Mrs. Pettibone's doorbell in a last-minute attempt to avert a civil war in the hat shop this afternoon. Yeah, pretty bell. I can just talk her into taking this hat with a veil. Maybe she'll give me back the one with the ostrich feather. Hmm. I guess she's not home. What am I going to do? i just got to get that. Hey, what's that in the window there? On the table. It's a hat. The one with the ostrich feather. The window's open, too. wonder if I could reach in. No, that wouldn't be right. I don't know, though. I can put this hat in its place. A fair exchange is no robbery. <laughs> this will fix everything. I'll just bend down here and reach in. Can't quite make it. Have to lean in a little farther. <laughs> Feathers tickling my nose. <laughs> Come to Throckmorton, you little... <laughs> the Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Mrs. Pettibone. Oh, you're back. What are you doing with your head in my window? Huh? Uh, uh, I was just looking for the water meter. Time to read it, you know. <laughs> the water meter is under the house. Oh, yeah. Newfangled inventions. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Pettibone, I've been thinking. That hat with the ostrich feather doesn't quite suit your personality, so I brought you this hat instead. I think you'd look much better with a veil. I mean, it's more stylish. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I simply adore the hat you gave me. You do? Oh, yes, indeed. The ostrich feather seems to do something for me. Oh, then you wouldn't consider giving it back. Oh, no. Why, no one could take that hat away from me now. <laughs> I'd just like to see them try. You will. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, Mr. Gildersleeve. See you at the opening in my new hat. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> 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 Wonder if they will fight over that hat. That line sounded awfully determined. So did Mrs. Pettibone. Could be another battle of bull runs. Well, maybe I'm worrying about nothing. I always worry so much. Adeline will calm down, I think. Yeah, let it drop into Peavy's. Check on that ice cream. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> I suppose you're all ready for the grand opening this afternoon? Huh? Yes. Just wanted to remind you, Peavy, don't forget to send out the ice cream. One gallon of vanilla, one gallon tutti fruity. It'll be there, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good. Like me to send out anything else for the opening? Hmm? Some iodine and bandages might come in handy. <laughs> what? Just in case there's any trouble. Oh. <laughs> I see the judge has been broadcasting again. Well, he, uh... Peavy, I don't think Adeline and Mrs. Pettibone will make a scene. Do you? Well, I guess they won't. No. Mrs. Pettibone is a refined society lady? Yes. Adeline is a charming southern woman? Yes. And two women like that wouldn't fight over a little thing like a hat? No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> they would not, Phoebe. I know women. No, I wouldn't say that either. 
Let's be logical about this. Now, you take your own wife. Would Mrs. Peavy fight about a hat with an ostrich feather? No, I don't think she would. There. She doesn't like ostrich feathers. <laughs> what? They give her hay fever. If, oh, my goodness. Peavy, the opening of this hat shop means a lot to me. I've got $200 invested in that thing. Yeah. If anything happens this afternoon, it'll be awful. Peavy, if you were in my shoes, what would you do? Well, I'd take along the iodine and bandages. Oh, you know, <laughs> goodbye. Well, if it ain't the commish. Hello, Floyd. Give me a quick shave. Okay. Hop right up in the chair. Uh, uh, uh. There you are. Uh, all set for the big opening today, Commish? Huh? Oh, yes. Just before the battle, Mother. <laughs> Floyd! <laughs> I bet that'll be a Lulu of a scrap, all right. What are you going to do, Commish, referee? All right, Floyd. Just get on with the shave. Okay. Too bad you got to close up the hat shop the same day you open. We're not closing. In fact, the opening is going to be a huge success. Uh-huh. Uh, Kamish, did you ever see two dames fight over a hat? No, I haven't. Well, I did once. Down to Hogan Brothers. Two gals got their eyes on the same hat, and they started tussling over it. Boy, you should have seen them. They almost wrecked the whole store. They did? Yep, knocked out two floor walkers, too. Two floor walkers? Yeah, I can just see what's going to happen at your opening. Everybody acting very refined and high class, and them fiddles playing soft music... Da 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 dum, dum dum da dum, and then bang! Mrs. Pettibone walks in and the fight starts. Floyd, before you know it, the joints in an uproar, hats flying through the air, dames screaming, then the riot squad comes. Floyd, stop that! And then tomorrow it's all over the front page, riot in hat shop. Rockmorton P. Gildersleeve found unconscious with an ostrich feather in his hand. Oh. Hey, where are you going, Commish? I didn't finish your shave. Never mind. I'll shave myself. <sighs> Almost three o'clock. Guess I'd better go in the hat shop. Can't stand out here in front all day. Customers will start coming in a few minutes. <laughs> this frock coat's kind of tight. Well, I guess I'll have to get another one anyway. This one will probably get torn up when the fight starts. <laughs> well, here goes. Might as well go in and face the music. Hey, Uncle, where you been? Oh, uh, hello, Leroy. Gee, you look swell in that outfit, just like a floor walker. Leroy, don't say that. Hello, Miss Gill, please. Uh, hello, Bertie. I got all the food ready. That's nice. Yes, sir, I'm ready. Just let them come. Yeah, let them come. <laughs> Mr. Gillsleeve, I know this is going to be like a real society opening. Yeah. And when Miss Pettibone walks in, that'll be the finishing touch. It sure will. <laughs> yes, that's going to be a knockout. I wonder what round. <laughs> <laughs> Bertie, have you seen Miss Fairchild? She's out in the kitchen fixing some flowers. Oh, Oh, well, I better go out there, I guess. Oh? Musicians are here, huh? Yasha Mitz and his ensemble. Uh, I'm gonna go out and see Adeline. Maybe she's forgotten all about this petty bone business. Well, hello, Clark Morton. Uh, hello, Adeline. I'm just fixing this last vase of flowers, and then we'll be all ready for the opening. I'm so thrilled, aren't you, partner? Yeah. Partner. Yes? Uh, I suppose you've forgotten all about your little tiff with Mrs. Pettibone. <laughs> I've done no such thing. Huh? I'm going to take care of her, all right. Well, what are you going to do? She'll wish she'd never seen that hat with ostrich feather. <laughs> hey, Uncle. Uh, what is it, Leroy? A lot of women are out there, and Mrs. Pettibone just came in. <laughs> Where are you going, Adeline? Out of my way, Throckmorton, and I hope she's wearing that hat. Oh, my goodness. Something wrong, Uncle? Oh, no, no, everything's fine, Leroy. Say, was Mrs. Pettibone wearing a hat with an ostrich feather on it? Yeah, she sure looked funny. <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. I'll see you later, Leroy. Hey, up! what are you going out the back door for? That's the wrong way. That's what you think. Hi. Goodbye. <laughs> Hi, Uncle. 
In the den. Rockmorton, where have you been? And why did you run over here to your home? Well, I... We had a wonderful opening. We did? Who won? I mean... Uh... We had an awfully big crowd, took pictures for the newspapers, and we got a lot of orders for hats. But didn't you and Mrs. Pettibone have a fight? Of course not, silly. But she wore your hat with the ostrich feather. I know that. And she looked so nice, I talked her into wearing it in the Easter parade. Well, then everything's all right between you two? Well, I didn't say that. Huh? I'm going to get even, all right. I have a little plan. I'm going to make two dozen hats with ostrich feathers and sell them for Easter. <laughs> you are? Mm-hmm. Just wait till the stylish Mrs. Pettibone sees all those other women wearing hats just like hers. <laughs> that Easter parade will look like an ostrich farm. Yeah. <laughs> Adeline, you're a little minx. <laughs> Maybe I am. You know, you were right about Mrs. Pettibone. What? She does look a little like General Grant's grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> A cup of steaming coffee and golden brown waffles covered with parquet. There's a combination that would be hard to beat on any February morning. And parquet margarine is as nourishing to your system as it is delicious to your taste. Get some parquet tomorrow, or at the latest, before those big leisurely Saturday or Sunday breakfasts you'll probably have this weekend. And as you take big, generous helpings of parquet, remember, it costs only about half as much as the most expensive spread. That's all the more reason for enjoying that light, delicate flavor. That luxury flavor you get when you eat parquet. The margarine that tastes like it should cost twice as much. That P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Well, looks like this hat business is going to be all right. We had a wonderful opening yesterday after all. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Mrs. Pettibone. <laughs> Oh, hello, Rollo. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, a terrible thing happened this morning. Oh, what's that? Naughty little Rollo got hold of my hat with the ostrich feather and chewed it all up. Isn't that a shame? Oh, yeah. Now I won't be able to wear it in the Easter parade. I know Miss Fairchild will be dreadfully disappointed. You don't know the half of it. What's that? Yeah, 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 nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, did you sneeze? I guess that ostrich feather gave him hay fever. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Eugen. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. You bet. Here's a real bargain. An all-aluminum silent butler. A dollar and a half retail value, and it's yours for only 50 cents and a Pabstet label. This silent butler is handsome enough for a gift, and it's big. Has a deep, generous-sized bowl, a long handle, a hinged top that opens at your touch. It's just the thing for collecting cigarette ashes or crumbing your table. Now today, just get either regular Pabstet or the new Pabstet two-pound economy loaf. Your dealer will give you full details about getting this beautiful aluminum silent butler valued at one dollar and a half for only 50 cents. This is NBC, the national...